Now that we've talked about Secure Shell, how it works and what it is, let's kind of go and look at the first few uh, lessons in using Secure Shell, the basics, if you will. The first thing we'll talk about is using Secure Shell for remote administration. Now, this is probably the most you're going to use SSH for. You're going to use it most often to remotely administer other computers that are also running SSH. These could be other Linux boxes, these could be Windows boxes, anything running the SSH daemon. We use SSH to connect to any other host, and we can perform administration tasks on those hosts just the same as if we were sitting at the local console. Now, there's a couple of requirements to do this. First of all, of course, you must have the SSH daemon or SSHD running on the other host. That has to have an SSH server running, otherwise you wouldn't be able to connect using SSH. Makes sense. You also must have valid user credentials on the other system. Uh, in order for you to log in using SSH, you must know a username and a password on the target system you're trying to get to. Now, if you have that, great. And if you don't specify that when you're logging in, it assumes that you're using the currently logged in user on the system you're on. Now, if that user exists on the other system, you're in good shape. There'll be some kind of login and pass through, uh, assuming that the username and password are the same. But if they're not, you're going to have to specify a username and password for that other system. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what it takes to log in using SSH and remotely administer another system. Okay, we're in our Computer B desktop, the OpenSUSE 11 desktop, and the first thing we're going to do is go to a command terminal, a terminal prompt, which we're at right now, and we're going to go ahead and connect to the other system. It's actually very easy to do. We just type in SSH. and we put a username or pass username for the other system in here. Now, if we did not, it would assume that we wanted to use the username that we're logged into this system with. We're going to go ahead and say root at, and we're going to put the IP address of the other system, 172.16.30.20. And we're going to go ahead and enter that. And it's going to take some time to authenticate. It wants to know that uh, we're using a valid username and password. So it's going to check that against the local username and password database in the Etsy password and Etsy shadow files on the other system. It's going to prompt us for a password, which we're going to enter. And now we're connected to computer A. We get our little banner there that says, have a lot of fun. Uh, we can change that banner, by the way, and we can put things like a warning banner and so forth uh, on SSH when we configure the SSH daemon if we want to. So now that we're logged into the other system, we can perform all manner of remote administration tasks. We can add users, we can manage file systems, and so forth. So it's actually very easy to use and, and very easy to connect to another system with SSH. And as you can see, once we're logged into the other system, uh, we can do just about anything as if we're sitting on the local console itself. Let's go ahead and exit. And one thing I also want to show you during this session, uh, we've exited out now and we're back at the Computer B desktop. One of the things I want to show you is a Wireshark capture of this Secure Shell session. Now before, in a previous session, we looked at a Wireshark capture of an FTP session. And we saw that it's basically unencrypted and that the username and password and data is sent in the clear across the wire and that can be sniffed and picked up. Let's look now at a Wireshark capture of the SSH session we just did. Okay, we're in our Windows XP box and we have a Wireshark capture of the SSH session between 30.30 .30 and 30.20. So let's take a look and see what we can see on this SSH session. I want to compare this to the Wireshark capture that we did earlier in the course where we captured an FTP session and we saw that it sends everything unencrypted across. Let's go ahead and drill down to this a little bit. First thing I want to show you is from 30.20 we have a SSH SYN packet being sent across and a reply from the other box SYN ACK. Now that's the beginnings of a three-way handshake and here's our third 
handshake sequence right there. So we've got our TCP three-way handshake right there, SIN, SIN, ACK, and ACK. And you can look down in here in the window and kind of see what the sequence number is, information about the connection itself. We see that it's on the destination port of Secure Shell, which is 22. Uh, we would expect to see that. And we can get the uh, SIN and SINAC sequence analysis and so forth on here. There's some other interesting things that we can see during this Wireshark capture. It's going to give us some information, as we can see in this particular packet, about the secure server itself. SSH version 2.0, and it's using OpenSSH 5.0, as you can see right there. So we get that information from the packet itself. So there's some good information right there. And then we can also see some other things going on down here as well. Now here's one of the big differences. Notice that while FTP had no encryption and sent everything across the wire in clear text, look at what Secure Shell is doing here. We see Secure Shell version 2, of course, and it's starting a key exchange. And we're using the key exchange that the two computers agree upon after the first time they connect. They exchange keys so they become trusted. So now these keys are being swapped and they will trust each other. Now this key exchange and so forth is going to be uh, an encrypted session here. It's going to result in an encrypted session and as you can see we're getting some SSH version 2 traffic across the wire here where there's a Diffie-Hellman key exchange going on. So that is our encryption taking place right there. We're swapping keys, and then now we get down here, and we're sending encrypted requests and res encrypted responses. So as you can see, SSH is a much more secure protocol than, say, FTP or Telnet or the R services. We've opened up a secure shell session to do some remote administration. We sent the root user's name and password across the wire, and we did some things uh, on the other box. All this was encrypted traffic because secure shell is an encrypted protocol.